Hello, how are you? We are at the midpoint of 2021. I hope you've been having a good reading year so far. Uh, over the past six months, I have read over 60 books so far, and looking through them, I wanted to pick out 10 books that I think are truly exceptional and inspiring and that I really want to highlight and recommend to you as books that I think are really great and that are worth getting to. And I don't blame you if you haven't read, been able to read all that much this year because of all the the stress in the world and and everything that's going on it's still a really difficult time uh, but personally I've found such refuge in the books I've been reading and taking real delight in them as a, like a form of escapism but also as a way of differently engaging with the world because a lot of these books have made me think about a whole range of ideas uh, from different angles and I really appreciate the perspective that they've been giving me. Um, so I would love to know um, from you if you've read any of these books as well and what you think about them or if you're interested in reading them after I talk about them here, uh, please let me know in the comments below. But also I'd really love to know from you what are the best books you've read so far this year? Like what are your highlights and ones that I should really get to reading? Because I love getting more book recommendations as well. So please let me know about those in the comments below as well. Uh, so I'm gonna get into these books now and starting off with, um, I'm not ranking these in, in any way, I'm just going through in alphabetical order by author surname because um, I can't really put one book in, in top of another, I can't really choose over them um, like that. So first off I'm gonna talk about At, the, At Night All Blood is Black by David Diop and this is translated by Anna Markowitz, I think it's Mash Masho, Mash I, I, I should have looked up the, the surname before I talked about this, but yeah, the translator's surname is Anna Mashkovakis, um, however you pronounce that. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, this is uh, highlighted, uh, especially uh, by the Booker Prize, the International Booker Prize chose this as their winner this year, which I was so happy about. And if you watch my video, I'm reacting to that, that prize. Uh, you see my absolute elation that it won because uh, the track record of, of, of what wins this prize um, hasn't always been like the, the best um, for, for me in lining up with my personal favorites. So I was so glad that this won because, and I was so glad that the prize like encouraged me to get to, to reading this because I thought this novel was so amazing. And I remember it was first published towards the end of last year and I thought it sounded interesting then. And I, it was highlighted again towards the end of the year when um, in an article, Ali Smith was was talking about it as one of her highlights of books that she'd read last year and and I, I should have listened to Ali Smith and got to it then uh, but no I just only read it amidst the the Booker Prize this year and it's it's incredible it's the story of a Senegalese soldier uh, fighting for France um, against Germany during World War One and follows his story at the very beginning of the story his friend dies and you follow this heart-wrenching journey of grief and rage and as he goes on this this killing rampage and of course it's it's war and so um so he's supposed to be fighting but he goes slightly unhinged and and you follow this journey as he steadily loses his humanity or is he finding his humanity by asserting himself and his independence like amidst um being drawn in as a soldier in this crazy conflict um, that he's involved in and the, the, the stereotypes that he has to live under and his fellow Senegalese soldiers live under fighting for France during this time and the, yeah, the way they're sort of characterized by the army and used as a tool by them and seen as more expendable than the French soldiers that they're fighting alongside and, and as he sort of like gradually comes back to himself and you you learn more about his life and his memories and it's just the most incredible book about war but also pondering these larger questions about what our humanity means and it's a book that has really stuck with me and that I've continued to think about a lot more. Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller and this is the story of an English family I'm um, living in the countryside uh, but it's 
unlike any other family story that you've read before. Uh, so it follows uh, the story of uh, twins, a brother and sister who are uh, just over 50 years old and still live at home with their mother. And at the very beginning of the novel, the, the mother suddenly dies. And the children, after having lived this very insular, self-contained life on this, um, in this cottage on this farm uh, for all of their lives um, suddenly find that they have to contend with all of these issues in, in the world to do with financial pressures and and um, and secrets um, that have been hidden from them for a long time and it is so gripping how it slowly unravels and furls the the secrets of this family story but also as um, it follows the story of this adult brother and sister as they they struggle to to find a place for themselves in in the world and and how they're gonna survive now on their own and it's this it's raised all these like questions for me thinking about like how much do we insulate ourselves from the larger world by our the family structures we make and the the relationships we we form with other people that we can make this real self-contained existence for ourselves which can which can be really nurturing and rewarding and you know wonderful in so many ways but but also is kind of shielding us from from the world in in a way which um one day will have to be broken if if um if something happens in those relationships or somebody dies and and these are issues that we're all going to have to contemplate at some point and the way that Claire Fuller follows this story I think is so heartrending and beautifully done and yeah so unusual like unlike any other story I've read before and also I had the great pleasure of uh, interviewing Claire uh, earlier this year um, before the the novel was published and before it was um, long listed for the the women's prize and uh, so so yeah, it was it was wonderful talking with her more about her ideas and her life as a writer. So I'll put a link to that below um, if you haven't watched that yet. And if you're curious to watch that, it's such an enriching, wonderful conversation I had with her. And, and I'm so excited that she's been shortlisted for the Women's Prize for, for fiction. It's just like thrilling and, and fantastic. And and now the, the prize date um, for when the winner is going to be announced has been moved to September. So it's still going to stay in suspense for a few more months before or finding out who wins this year. Uh, but in the meantime, yeah, I would highly, highly recommend this incredible new novel. The High House by Jesse Greengrass. And I don't know what it is, if it's uh, because I've spent so much time at home over the past year, but I've really related to these fictional stories uh, about a very like insular existence in a home. And uh, so like Claire Fuller's novel, this is another novel that mainly takes place in, in one home and, and you follow the story story of this this family unit or this improvised family unit um, that's now really been trapped together because this is a post-apocalyptic novel um, about after an environmental disaster occurs um, massive flooding occurs in in England and uh, this uh, family who the the mother is a prominent scientist and she knows this is going to happen so she's kind of made provisions um, against the this um, this occurring for for her family and for her stepdaughter and her her younger son and uh, and so after this event occurs the sister and um, her brother um, are living in this house alongside um, a woman and her father um, who lived in the local area and the four of them are in this house and you follow the events immediately before and then after um, the the event occurs and uh, and it is so thrilling and terrifying uh, following this this story but also um, very moving and 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 kind of looking at the the world from this very narrow perspective as the world has sort of collapsed around them and this is all that's left around them and they're sort of picking out pieces um, and salvaging what they they can that's that's useful for them and there's just something so moving and beautiful about the way that Greengrass 
evokes this this world and this existence for them and 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 is looking at it from this very contemplative point of view um which i found very profound and moving and so i i think it's an incredible story and, and i i realize that some people won't you know want to read about these like sort of terrifying global events at, because of all the uh, trouble we're facing in the world but at the same time i think this novel says so much about this and, and provides a a strange sort of consolation during this time of strife. Transcendent Kingdom by Ya Gyasi and this novel made me feel so much. It, it broke my heart a number of times but also lifted me up and really inspired me in, in a number of ways uh, as we follow the tale of its central character of Gifty who's a young university student uh, studying neuroscience and performing a number of experiments as a way of desperately trying to understand her family's history and, and why they did the things that, that they did. So she was raised in this strict Christian uh, upbringing uh, in uh, Alabama but then uh, her family kind of broke apart for a number of different reasons um, their their father left quite early on to, to move back to his native uh, Ghana and he, her mother um, suffers from a number of mental health issues and her brother um, suffered badly from addiction and the way we get flashes back to that past and that history and that story as she's conducting these experiments is so meaningful as this really searching and beautifully searching way and really heartrending searching way of of trying to understand her family and what happened to to them um, but outside of this this like concentrated story of family life you see these much larger issues of divides in societies to do with race and religion and it asks much bigger questions while looking at this this very focused story of this specific family life as I grew to love all of these these characters and their their many different struggles and really was I, I was I was completely gripped throughout it because I was I was really worried what was going to happen to Gifty herself because I, I grew to care about her so much um, because of the, the beautiful way that uh, Yagyasi like evokes her, her character and, and her story and so felt completely swept into this whole tale. Clara and the Sun by Kazu Ishiguro and obviously this is one of the biggest publications so far this year as Ishiguro is such a, a massive like titan in world literature and uh, this is his first novel since he won the Nobel Prize for Literature and I think he really proves in this story you know why he is such a lauded and uh, much loved author. So the the story on its surface is quite a, a simple one is kind of like a children's story following the the journey of an artificial friend through her perspective as she is purchased by a family and uh, given to a child and goes out into the world and you slowly over the course of the story get a sense that things aren't all that they appear to be and that there are slightly sinister things going on in the background and so it's quite a tense journey following it but also you get it through this very sweet perspective of this very uh, kindly innocent uh, individual um, who is a robot but uh, but you almost forget that she's a robot and and so in that way it like makes you really question what is what is what makes us human and and that seems like quite a like obvious question one that's been asked in literature a lot before but I think it approaches it from a really new angle and this book especially is one that has really lingered with me and I keep thinking back on it you know I think the the strongest books that we ever read are ones that will like subtly think back on over time whether a certain line or a scene or a, a situation or, or an idea that it raises will suddenly come back to us and we'll be thinking about the perspective that the the novel the fictional story gave us and and uh, and I think that makes it so powerful and in particular the ending of this novel like I'm not gonna give away what happens at the end but but the ending I've been like thinking about more and more because it made me think about these 
larger issues, like so much more um, in the, the perspective it gives. And, and the, the situation you're sort of left with at the end, it, it, um, it's this very contemplative space. And it, and it asks you, like, what, what is the, the real meaning of life? What is the purpose of life? And, and I think how it raises that is so profound and moving. Luster by Raven Leilani. And obviously, this has been a much beloved novel, much like talked about and hyped novel. And it's one of those books that I was so surprised when I sat down to actually read the story. I wasn't expecting to be so drawn into it and connect with the, the character so strongly as uh, we follow the, the protagonist, Eddie, um, who's a young black woman working in publishing and is having a lot of chaotic uh, experiences, especially like romantic and sexual experiences. And she meets a married man online and uh, starts seeing him. Um, he's in an open marriage and they have this uneasy relationship with each other which um, grows even more uncomfortable as time goes on and she becomes more involved with him but also his wife and their adopted daughter and how she follows that that journey as it becomes almost like surreal in its its tone is so striking and unusual and and I found it completely gripping and I got swept up in this story and there's so many like real world details that I found relatable and insightful and like surprisingly new perspective that it that it gives on the world but also yeah the way it enters this this kind of surreal landscape and um, as you go into their their family home and the odd workings and dynamic between these people as uh, yeah they, they're working out their relationships with each other each other but also how they want to to live in the world and 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 what their their actions say about them and and uh, yeah this this novel says so much and and gives quite like a humorous edge throughout it um that i really appreciated and and that i also found riveting and and uh, and exciting and but uh, but also yeah it asks a lot more moving and and deep questions i think as well that um so it leaves you things to contemplate while also to telling a really engaging story. The Other You by Joyce Carol Oates, and Other is in parentheses. Uh, this is a collection of short stories looking at a number of different individuals, uh, many of whom are contemplating their, their lives in a particular point in their lives when they made like a decision and their lives went off in, in one direction and they are thinking about how if things had gone differently, um, they could have taken a very different road in their lives. And I think it's it's so moving how uh, Joyce Carol contemplates this from a number of different ways because you know we all have these things where we get caught up thinking about like oh if I would made another decision at this point or if this thing hadn't happened then things would have been so different in my life and get caught up with those those ideas and and thoughts and and it, it becomes almost inhibiting sometimes but then I think we have to think about like well what would have happened if if that had really happened and would things have worked out in this ideal way that we sort of imagined that that, that it would have happened and so I think she shows in a lot of these different stories how those other alternative like realities or other paths in lives aren't wouldn't always be i you know wouldn't always be perfect and and uh, and we have to be sort of cautious thinking about these things and getting hung up on these things um because yeah the the way she looks at this from a number of different angles i mean so some of the stories are sort of connected with each other in that um a few of the stories take place in this uh, one cafe where a uh, terrorist bombing occurs and it shows events from a number of different angles that that make you really think about this but but also how um, the the book of stories opens and closes with this individual living in this small town in upstate New York and this individual sort of resembles Joyce Carol Oates herself in in a number of ways and you it's it's almost the author reckoning with herself about well what if I hadn't left my hometown in upstate New York and what if I hadn't become a famous writer and what would have my life have been like and and so I think it's a real personal reckoning in that way but also looking at these larger issues um, through a number of different stories and characters and so there's a character of a, of a man that's um, been an academic for many years and he goes back to this foreign city and and the way she explores this 
as fictionally, sometimes the characters enter into this almost kind of absurdist landscape and this kind of dreamlike landscape where they're viewing these different alternative realities. And, and the way she does that, I think, is so creative and, and exciting and really thrilling to, to read about. And so obviously I'm an enormous Joyce Carol Oates fan, but I think in this collection, she really does something new and exciting and something that I've not come across before. And, uh, and so I thought it's such a moving and wonderful book to read. D Transition Baby by Tori Peters. This novel really should have been on the shortlist for this year's Women's Prize for Fiction, but that's a whole other issue. But I think this novel is tremendous and deliciously thrilling as you follow the messy, messy lives of its characters. And uh, one character who is pregnant, uh, and she is pregnant by uh, a man um, that she works with um, who in his past he transitioned into being a woman and then he detransitioned back into being a man and he ha had a relationship in the past with a trans woman who really wants to be a mother and has this real maternal urge and so they are trying to work out whether they can form a family with each other um, after after this woman gives birth and and how that will work and whether that'll work and and in doing so looking looks at the, the past of their lives and their situations and yeah this this dynamic that they find themselves in and the way that Tori Peters explores that is so riveting and exciting and really lots of like sumptuous detail and is very funny as well as as heartbreaking as you follow their their journey and their stories and and how they got to where they are and and how she gets at that is is so exciting and new and it's unlike any story I've read before and really gave me a new perspective on things and and uh, and I'm just so grateful for it and and I'm looking forward to reading more of Tori Peters work. This One Sky Day by Leonie Ross, this explosion of color and this novel was called Poppy Show in America uh, because uh, Poppy Show is the name of this fictional archipelago that the the novel is set on um, a, a series of islands and uh, it follows the story of these characters. Um, the, the, the main character is a chef who holds this very special place in the community and it is in sort of the lead up to a wedding and but the that's that's sort of like a deceptive description about what this novel is about as it follows the many different characters on this island and everyone on this series of islands is born with this special magical ability and how it follows those stories and as you discover these different abilities and how it comes into play in the stories of, of, of what's happening on this island is is so gripping and wonderful and and it's just in like an ex imaginative explosion of, of following this this story um, which is, is so wonderful but also really meaningful in the the issues it looks at in terms of like gender dynamics and economic disparity and you know the lives of all these these characters and and I think this the the novel of the longest novel um, on this group of books that I'm talking about. It's almost 500 pages long, but it, it just sweeps you up in its story. And so I found it so gripping all the way through. And it's one of those books that I'm really looking forward to going back to because there's so much detail in it and that I know I'll discover a lot more on reading it a, a second time. And I think that's always a mark of a really great book. If you're really looking forward to rereading it at, at some point, then, um, then yeah, that, that really says something. And uh, I just think this this novel is is a wonderful work of the imagination and and is so delightful in in so many ways that um that I just got completely wrapped up in its story. And finally there is The Performance by Claire Thomas and this novel if you know that that meme of a dog a cartoon dog sat in a fire with his cup of coffee and and he's saying this is fine um, as as the room is burning around him this is a kind of novel that is like expressing the that whole situation because it is three women um, sitting in a theater in Australia watching a performance of Samuel Beckett's play Happy Days uh, while outside of the theater a bushfire is, is occurring and so there's this environmental disaster occurring uh, outside and getting ever closer to the 
theater while they're watching this this play going on and you follow these three different women it sort of switches between their perspectives over the course of the play and how it like interacts with the the text of that play is, is so interesting and exciting um so if you don't know the the play happy days it's about this woman buried in sand and she's just sort of merrily talking about her days and the things around her um while she's steadily being buried in sand and so it's it's looking at this situation of the world where we we feel this impending disaster around us and we're just sort of sat here contemplating it trying to figure out what we're going to do and who we are and and what the the meaning of all of this is while while all this these larger world events are occurring around us and i thought it's so riveting how she follows this story and gets into the 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 different perspectives of all these different of uh, these three different women um who are at different points of their lives they're, they're all different ages and come from different backgrounds so very different perspectives on on all of this and 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 yeah, and how she gets that in their interaction with each other, but also the way that she structures this book itself. It's kind of structured sort of like a play with an intermission. And, and yeah, it's so inventive. And so I think it's an incredibly artful book as well as telling a really meaningful and relevant story. Um, so yeah, I'd highly recommend this as well as all these other books that I've been talking about. So like I said, if you've read any of these books, um, please comment below. Um, I'd love to have a chat about them and discuss them more. Um, I'll also put links below to my full reviews of all of these um, if you want to know more of my thoughts about them. Uh, but also, yeah, let me know about some of your favorite books that you've read uh, so far this year and what I should be reading and what you would really highly recommend. I'd love to know about that as well. Uh, so thank you for watching. I will speak to you again soon and happy reading everyone. Bye-bye.